Hey, I'm Wojtek. And that over there, that's cat doing yoga. This one here, that's Nova. And this, this is a van tour. Nova is a 2016 converted Citroën jumper camper van and it is where we live now, permanently. I introduced you to our van for the first time in the last video and many of you wanted a tour, so we are doing a tour. But one thing I want to mention is we did not build this van out ourselves, but we did it with the help of a company called Happy Campus. This video is not sponsored, I just really much appreciate what they've built for us. And if you want to know why exactly we didn't do that, which actually has many different reasons, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if any questions during the van to pop up, leave them all down below. Many of you already had questions, but I figured to keep this video sweet and short, we will do a van tour only and then do the Q&A the next week or the week after that. I just figured it would make way more sense to actually do this after you see what we are dealing with here. Other than that, I want to say that this is kind of a van tour 1.0. We're still figuring things out and it is all very fresh. So expect another update at some point in the future. For now, this is what it looks like. This is the inside of our new home. To the right, we have some curtains for privacy or to block out the light when we are trying to sleep. Up here, we have a skylight with three, actually four settings, which are closed, slightly open, open and open all the way. We can also block out the sun or use our insect screen to let in a little bit more light. And for filmmaking purposes, this also gives off a nice little diffusion effect. Up on top here, we have some storage space, which we use for either jackets or some stuff we might need day in, day out. And we have this long pillow, which has a special use case I will explain in just a bit. And then up here, as a decorative element, we have the knot cat and eye tied, literally. Then right in front of us, we have the office slash the living room with our two-story shoe shelf for our Birkenstocks and our sneakers. Then we have two seating opportunities with an adjustable table. This one can be dragged into the room and back. You can also pull or push it back and forth and you can also adjust the height, which if you put it all the way down and then you grab the long pillow and put it on top, turns into a couch, which is awesome because it gives us more space, more flexibility, and potentially also can be used as a short little guest bed. A bug, let me quickly get this one out. It's a wasp, German wasps are the worst. Get out! Also, we have two windows and they're kind of blacked out. I cannot really show you much because it's incredibly bright outside, but they're not like fully blacked out. It's basically, if you're far away, you cannot really see in, but if you're up close, you can kind of gasp what is going on. Ah. And especially at night, when we turn our lights on here, you can really see everything. Which is why we got curtains. My mom made those, by the way, so. Thanks, mom. And the curtains, you can either pull them to one side or the other, or if you want both parties to see, what we actually do sometimes is you can wrap those up all the way here. Beneath this seat, as we open this up, is what I like to call the center of power. Inside here, we have a 200 milliamp hours battery. We have an inverter for everything that needs more than 12 volts and a charging booster to charge our battery while driving. What you don't see in here or anywhere else is that up on top on the roof, we have two 100 watt solar panels to get a bit of charging going also when we are not driving. Then inside our second seat, we have our portable 
toilet. And I don't know what exactly this is called in English, but this is a dry toilet system, which basically means poo and pee get separated, which mainly prevents the solid stuff from smelling. And then the opening to the urine tank is so small that also basically no smell escapes. And once either of the tanks is full or you just feel like it's about time, you simply go and empty it. Once you're done, you put it back in and you're ready to go. But let's turn from the side of waste to the kitchen, which was extremely important for us. So on the one hand, we really like to cook. On the other, we simply enjoy good food. So this was crucial, which is also why we have an additional folding table element for more space and, well, to keep other people out. Over here, we are having our stove with two cooking plates, which we are so far are very happy with. It runs on gas, although I don't know if I would have ever chosen a black stove again. It's just a lot of cleaning, but it also looks very good. Then this closet here is where our gas tank resides. This gray box is what I've been told a protective cabinet, which in Germany is legally required. And strictly speaking, there really shouldn't be anything else inside, but we still use it for different things. This closet, by the way, also opens up from both sides. So if we ever want to exchange our gas bottle, like just quickly get it out, or if we need to access something from the outside, like for instance, our doormat, we can just easily do that. Next to the closet is our fridge and this little thing here is a lock and it does not look particularly nice and no, we're not afraid that people might steal our food, but we've made the experience that if we take too heavy turns too fast, the fridge can open up and our groceries fall out, which is not fun. So we got this little thing and so far it is doing its job perfectly. Other than that, the fridge so far has been really all we needed. There's definitely more than enough space. Well, not more than enough space, but there's definitely enough space for the both of us. And we even have a freezer so that we can have ice cream anytime. Next to the fridge, we have the sink. And what you see here on top is actually a cutting board, but it's kind of looking way too nice, so I now use it as a laptop stand for most situations. Which is why, that's the wrong way, there we go. When you open up this closet, you see a cutting board there and the biggest frying pan we don't know where else to put, then some cleaning utensils. And if you open up the other side of it, this is where you see the gray water tank. And also behind this, there is the boiler for some hot water, which so far really we did not need and did not really use all that much. But if we would want to, what we would do is switch on the inverter, tap that little switch next to the sockets, then activate the pump, and then use the water tap like you would use a water tap. Which by the way has two settings, this one and this one. Tap it off, tap it off. On the other side, we have our nightstand, and I won't explain to you how a nightstand works. But here in the corner, right behind our little lovely Pilea, we have a multi-purpose socket. Next to it, we have two light switches, one for the three lights in the front, all LEDs, one in the back, and we made the experience that one LED usually is enough to lighten up the whole interior. But when we need to clean something or we're still working in the kitchen, three LEDs when there's less light might actually come in handy. Then down here, this is the remote for our heating system. So far, we didn't really need it. It's a fairly hot summer in Germany right now, but it's good to know that we have it in case that it's cold and we need it. Up here, there's a mirror, which I, by the way, wish would be a little bit bigger, but that's a fight cat one. And down here, we have our drawers. We keep all the stuff we need either every day or we know we will need long-term regularly down here. One of the drawers is nicely organized with, well, 
those for organizers and stuff in between so we don't need to really search all too long for our small stuff then the drawer below is not as organized or actually it is but it's more functionally organized what we have in here are those small wooden boxes for our cutlery some kitchen utensils down below for even more kitchen utensils down below there's actually another box which is empty because we got two for one and we didn't know what to do with it so we just keep it there in case we also have our dishes, our mugs and our bowls in here and those thingies you see in between there, those are felt separators. We've put them there in case we ever hit a bumpy road. We don't really need to be all that afraid of stuff breaking in the back. And our last drawer is the big one, the one I'm really most impressed with. This is where we keep all the big stuff like a mixer, my AeroPress, a kettle, big bowls, all the good stuff we need for the kitchen. If we close this one, turn this way, beneath our bed we'll find a small door which leads to our garage. We have two storage boxes which we can drag out. We found those in a hardware store and it is basically where we store our groceries. That was a lot of store, but it's mainly for storage space. So this is what this is. Which, after an extensive tour, brings us to the area of relaxation and sleep, our bed. We very intentionally opted for a fixed bed. The alternative would be a pull-out bed, which gives you a little bit more space during the day, but you also have to face the daunting task of making your bed every day twice, in the morning and in the evening. And Kat and I know from experience that at some point we'd either stop making or start hating it, probably both. And this way, every time we just feel like it, we just have to climb up here and get a good rest. Other than that, we have here our four top shelves, two for Kat, two for me, and another half for bathroom utensils. Back here we have our fairy lights, which currently are not really doing much, but in the night give off a nice romantic atmosphere. Up here we have another skylight and we also very intentionally opted for only one curtain instead of two, so that if we ever want to enjoy the scenery, we can simply drag it to the side and do so without interfering with our view. In the back is where we find two doors, which lead to what we call the garage. And if you take a look in here, it looks pretty messy, but I promise there is a system to it. We use the garage mainly for things we are even not so sure of yet, or for things we know we do not need every day. And we do this with those two storage boxes, but also with a little bit of uh, intuitive organization, that's what I would call it. Things we keep in there are, for instance, sports equipment, some filmmaking stuff, our outdoor chairs, our outdoor table, and a hammock. The garage, as well, is the place where the heater and the water tank reside. The heater on the right, there's really not much to show you. The water tank here to my left. This here is the lid. When we open this up, it is the place where we fill up our 80 liters of fresh water. And down below, we have a lid, a flap. Not exactly sure what to call this but basically we have the option to connect a shower here and get one in case we need one, we want one, which we, by the way, do. And that sums up the tour. So, in summary, I know this is not the most basic, most minimalist build out and it's also not the most luxurious one. It's somewhere in the middle and that makes it kind of perfect because it is perfect for us. And this is really what matters because we live here. I, in part, witnessed the whole discussion around van life not being what it used to be and van life being that, where it formerly was this romantic thing where people just tried to make things work with as little as they got and now it became this huge flex and, and industry and all. But I don't really care for it because we are just trying to make this work for us. And I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and also like i mentioned in the beginning we're not really done here we have some ideas and one thing we definitely want to do is personalize this more because right now this could be anyone's van we could rent this out very easily but that's not really what we want what we actually want is to make this our home 
And with that being said, if you have any further questions, please leave them down below. I'm really looking forward to doing the Q&A next week or the week after that, like I said, because I'm going on a bit of a break. We're going on a bit of a break. Since this year, we've so far not really taken any time off properly. And that is about time to do a little bit of a honeymoon before the actual travels, the actual van life gets started. And I'm really looking forward to that. And me taking a break in real life, hopefully does not mean taking a break from uploading videos for, well, all of you guys. I much appreciate you being here and I see you. Beneath this seat, as we open this up, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs>